the Toronto Free Theatre. Yeah. Now, there were the three of you, is that right? Shane Jaffe, we, Martin Kinch, and yourself. Well, no, uh, the, the founding three uh, were uh, John Palmer, Martin Kinch, and myself. That's right. And then uh, we needed, uh, I wanted to work as a producer. I didn't want to be a manager. And somebody told me about uh, Shane, and uh, I called him up. And and he was interested. And how did the three of you come together? John uh, okay, when I was, I, I was the, uh, in Stratford, I was the manager for uh, literary things for the, uh, the uh, festival in 1969-71. And uh, Martin and John Palmer and various others had a little theater and John Palmer came to see me in my office at the, uh, I always remember because my um, office was right above the cannon. And John Palmer came in and John Palmer was at best like this about everything, right? And <laughs> so I've come to ask a favor of him. <laughs> what was that? I said, well, that's the noon ca ca cannon. Oh. Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay. Okay. Well, uh, we're getting a lot of static from the local cops about our shows because there's a lot of nudity and a lot of this and a lot of that. Sir, so John Palmer's in Martin's theater was in Stratford? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of it now, but it was uh, people from, you know, Martin's wife, song? Meryl Kinch. No, no, oh, no, that was... I remember their uh, thing in, in, in between uh, sets. Someone said, my garden was on fire. The firemen stood around it, getting higher. <laughs> so Palmer came to you and said that he needed help. Because he said, I, I need police. you to, to be a witness. Come and see our plays and be a witness that they are not obscene or anything like that. I said, well, I hear they are obscene. Well, I know, that's why we need a witness. <laughs> so I, I used to go to all their shows uh, with the, the head of the uh, uh, morality squad in Stratford. His name was, uh, oh golly, but it, uh, it was, who was the guy who buried Caesar? Barry C. Mark Antony. This guy's name was Mark Antony. <laughs> and he was the morality he was officer? The, he was the head and only, right? And, uh, Do we still have morality officers? I guess so. Anyway, uh, he and I would go there and there'd be seven or eight uh, other people. And it was unusual for the the uh, audience to outnumber the people on stage, but so what? Anyway, uh, at the uh, break, he, we'd go outside and he'd say, well, how about it? And I said, I will not testify against these people. This is, look, you can buy all these girly magazines and everything here in Stratford. My God, that's much worse than what you've seen. He said, that's fine, I can go home now. <laughs> and what was the morality officer seeing in John he, he, Palmer's shows? That uh, was John Palmer's, uh, well, uh, a lot of nudity, a lot of swear words, <laughs> a lot of stuff that uh, you don't get that much of in Shakespeare, you know. In Stratford, that's what they were used to, was Stratford. But the, because I had written a satiricon for them, which had a lot of nudity and a lot of this and that, uh, they gathered that I was a kindred spirit, you see. And so I just was their guardian angel for that whole summer. So let's go back to Strike a bit later, because I do want to talk about satiricon. Let's talk about the free theater a bit, because it's, it was established as something that would be free, there would be no admission. Yeah. Uh, it's ended up in this building, which has turned into Ken Stage, one of the establishments. Mm -hmm. So how did how did you go from a lip grant to this? Well, for one thing, uh, 
uh, people who are donating money to us, people, I mean, friends of mine, uh, said you should get something from the audience. And uh, so, when you say friends of yours, you were asking friends for contributions to the theater. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you don't go to enemies <laughs> if you need help. <laughs> and uh, some of them came on the board. Some of them said, oh, I'll pay you not to be on the board, and so on. And uh, actually, one of the reasons why uh, we actually began charging was the other theaters in, in Toronto, the other small theaters, complained that we were, you know, that we were uh, competing unfairly with them. Because we were getting uh, mostly people uh, from theater and broadcasting and uh, mostly students. That's, that was, those two groups were maybe 80%. And there were people coming to see it in Rolls Royces, <laughs> free theater. It seems silly that they wouldn't pay. This is 1972, 1973. Uh, we started in the theater, yeah, 72, yeah. And this space behind you was the first performance space. Is that yeah, right? that's right, yeah. Well, I remember the first day we climbed in through a window. Uh, I had gotten Shane to find a, a place for us, Shane Jaffe, who became our manager. and. Uh, he went to an architect, and the architect, well, you should look at the, the buildings down on Berkeley. They're wonderful. So we came down here, and oh, boy, it was a mess. And we just found a window where we could just climb through. We went in. My heart stopped. It was the most beautiful space I'd seen in my whole entire life. And it was boarded and derelict. Absolutely, yeah. Who owned it? Uh, at that point, it had been bought by the Greenspoon brothers, who uh, were wreckers. They had been hired by the people that actually owned this. I don't know, there was some kind of who knows what. Uh, they wanted to wreck it and, and sell the bricks. It's a very unusual kind of brick in this building. And uh, there's not a lot of it in Canada. And. Uh, they took a one look at the green spoons, and they were rough, tough guys. Let me tell you. Uh, and they said it's too beautiful to for us to blow it up. Why don't you sell it to us? And I said, well, okay. And uh, how much do you want for it? They said, well, for all the buildings, hundred thousand. They said, top 75,000. And I said, okay, why not? So they bought the whole thing here, all the building. And the Greenspoon brothers only bought, bought it because they didn't want to tear it down. They had a real kind of cultural thing. They were tough guys, right? And uh, in fact, uh, there used to be a, a society uh, columnist in the, in the uh, Globe and Mail. And if you had a party and you gave a list of people, you had to have three names like Thomas Best Hendry. But you, she wouldn't put your name in unless you had three. So uh, we had a party and we were to thank the Greenspoons, you know, for renting us so cheaply the place. And uh, <clears throat> One of them, Mo, Mo Greenspoon, I sent it in to Zena Cherry was her name. And she phoned me, she says, what is this Mo? What's his real name? I said, well, as far as I know, it's Mo, but I'll find out. Well, I, I need three. So uh, I phone up, you know, and get George or somebody. What's Mo's actual name? Well, uh, Mo. Well, is it Moses or, or what? I mean, you're Jewish. Is it Moses? No, it's Mo. He's always been Mo. So I said, oh, okay. Does he have a middle name? Not to my knowledge. 
So I phone her up and I say, it's Moses Charles Greenspoon. And of course then he gets at me because he read it in the paper. I'm not, is isn't my name. I'm not Mo. That's the kind of guys. But they had an eye for beauty, you know.